G'day folks, I just want to do an introduction to the index laws. Uh, a lot of this is actually going to be uh, revision. So you've seen many of these index laws. Uh, you've certainly seen uh, almost all but the last one, or versions of them. So you know enough to understand everything but the last index law. I'm just going to run through all of them quickly. So here are the index laws. Uh, I'll, I'll sort of dot point them so you can see where, where, which one each one is. Now they're not numbered, it's not like the Ten Commandments where you know the first, second and third, etc. So they're, they're sort of different uh, index laws and they don't actually come numbered. So it's not like you can say using the fourth index law because it depends on you know, uh, the order that you happen to write them in. But that's all the ones that we need to know. Okay, so. Uh, you need to get them down, you need to have them in a place where you can easily access them. So, uh, what do they tell us? Let me go through simple examples for each of them. Look at this, over here, if I'm multiplying two terms with the same base, so both of those have got a base of A, the base does not change. The base does not change. All I do is I add the powers. So, for example, if I've got x squared times x cubed. Uh, the x there, the x there stays an x. The x does not change. No change in the base, right? What does happen though is I add the powers. So 2 plus 3 is 5. Okay. Uh, and it doesn't matter how many of these I've got. So if I've got an x squared times x cubed times another x squared, well they've all got the same base. So I just add the powers. So it's going to be x. The base does not change. 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 2 is 7. Okay, that's how that uh, index law up there works. You would have seen that before anyway, it's not new. What about the second one? Well, the second one is very much like it. It says that when we're dividing, uh, that we subtract our powers. So look at this, a to the m divided by a to the m, the base does not change. The base does not change. It's going to be a to the power of n minus m. So look, even if it's not with pronumals, even if it's with numbers, if I've got a 10 to the power of 5 divided by 10 to the power of 2, the base does not change. The 10 doesn't change. There's a 10 there, a 10 there. There's going to be a 10 there. It doesn't matter if it's pronumerals or numbers, it does not matter. The base does not change. So what happens? Uh, the base doesn't change that. The rule tells me that I subtract my powers. 5 take away 2 is 3. Okay? Uh, and it wouldn't matter if it was numbers or pronumerals, so x to the power of uh, 7 divided by x to the power of 3. The base doesn't change. When I'm dividing, I subtract powers, so it's going to be x to the power of 4. Okay. What about the next one? Well, the next one uh, tells me what happens when I'm working with brackets. And it tells me, well, the next two actually, the next two tell me the same thing. That when I'm working with brackets, if I've, so long as what's in the bracket is a product, now what does product mean? Product means that I'm multiplying things. Or a quotient. What does quotient mean? Quotient means I'm dividing things. So long as what's in the brackets is a product or a quotient. So not addition and subtraction, only multiplication or division. If what's in the bracket is a multiplication or a division, and there's a power outside the bracket, then that power gets d distributed to both of the bases. So AB to the power of N, well the A gets the power of N, and the B gets the power of N. Okay. Uh, a uh, divided by B to the power of N, the A gets a power of N, and the B gets a power of N. Okay. So let's have a look. So if I've got uh, uh, X, Y to the power of 4, well both of those get a power of 4. So the X gets a power of 4, and the Y gets a power of 4. If it was a division, same story, if I've got uh, um, uh, X, over y to the power of 3, well, it's a division, the, the power gets distributed to both the numerator and the denominator, 
So x gets a power of 3 and y gets a power of 3. Uh, now we can even now start to join up some of the other index laws and, and combine these laws with some of the top ones. So let's have a look. So what if I've got uh, a squared times b to the power of 3? Well, this means that the a squared gets a power of 3. So a squared gets a power of 3 and b gets a power of 3. Okay, so the 3 gets distributed to both the a squared and to the b. Now what do we do here? Well, a squared to the power of 3, if you think about what that means, then the, you know, the, the, the rule it follows is very, very straightforward. Uh, a squared to the power of 3 means a squared times a squared times a squared. Okay? So the power of 3 means multiplied by itself three times. But what happens here? Look, the bases stay the same and the powers get added. So I'm going to get 3 lots of 2, 3 lots of 2 is 6. Did you hear what I said? 3 lots of 2. Okay? But I could have worked out 3 lots of 2 from over here. So I'm just multiplying these two numbers. So this is going to be a to the power of 6, b to the power of 3. Okay. Uh, and it would be the same if I was dividing. So if I had uh, uh, a cubed over b squared all to the power of 5. Let me make that a bit clearer. Well, the a cubed gets a power of 5, and the b squared gets a power of 5. And what happens with these? Well, we know we just saw that, right? So that's 5 lots of 3, or 5 times 3. That's a to the power of 15, and uh, uh, 2, so 5 lots of 2 is 10, or 5 times 2 is 10 b to the power of 10. That's all we can do there. We can't simplify that because they're not the same. We don't subtract powers because we don't... You, know, you can only subtract powers when you've got the same base. Okay? Same base only. Alright, let's keep on going. What if we've got a negative power? Well, two different laws. There's this law here and this law up here. Okay? Uh, a to the power of negative n equals 1 over a to the power of n. The way I think about negative indices is that I think that the, anything with a negative power is on, is on the wrong side of the fraction line. Okay, so over here that's sitting, if you imagine that's over 1, it's got a negative power, it's on the wrong side, so it's got to cross the fraction line, then it gets a positive power. When it goes down beneath, it leaves a 1 behind, but its power becomes positive. Look over here. You've got division inside brackets. That power goes to both, the top and the bottom. So that's a to the power of negative n over b to the power of negative n. They've both got a negative power. They're both on the wrong side of the fraction line. So x, y to the power of negative 3. Well, that's x to the negative 3, y to the negative 3. Okay, negative power, wrong side of the fraction line. That x cubed has to move. It's got to go down the bottom. Look at that. Y's got a negative power. It's on the wrong side. It's got to move. It's got to go to the top. Okay, now that's exactly the same as saying y over x cubed. Okay, so look what happens. x over y to the negative 3 is the same as y over x to the positive 3. They flip around and the power uh, changes from positive to negative. Okay, we're going to see more of these. This is just an introduction to all of the index laws. So don't panic. Uh, we're going to go through all these. The first exercise really only gets you to do uh, you know, uh, the, the first four index laws. So we're going to see these other ones later on. Don't stress. Uh, and then the 
power of zero, uh, really simple, anything to the power of zero equals one. Why is that? Because of this. If I, if I ask you what is five divided by five, well, you'll tell me five divided by five is one. Uh, what is uh, 10 divided by 10? Well, that's one. What is negative seven divided by negative seven? Well, that's one. Any time I get something divided by itself, it doesn't matter if it's, if it's a, a, a pronumeral or a number, the answer is one. X divided by X is one. Any time I divide something by itself, the answer is always one. Uh, X squared divided by X squared is one. Any time I get something divided by itself, the answer is one. But wait a second. Look at this guy. X squared divided by X squared. Well, I can use this index law on that. This would say that x to the power of 2 divided by x to the power of 2 is x to the power of 2 minus 2. Well, that would be 0. That equals 1. Anything to the power of 0, anything to the power of 0 equals 1. Okay. So let me, let me show you an example of this index law at play. If I ask you to simplify uh, 4a to the power of 0, plus 3a all to the power of 0. Well, what's got a power of 0 over here? The a has got a power of 0. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. The 4 does not have a power of 0. 4 has got a power of 1. Okay, so this says 4 times 1 is 4. Now look at this. This set of brackets is to the power of 0. A, anything to the power of zero is one. A set of brackets to the power of zero is one. Okay, zero to the power of zero is one. So that whole thing equals five. Okay. And then the last one uh, says that if I've got a fractional power, so let's say I've got eight to the power of two thirds. Well, the number on the bottom, the denominator, says that I want that root of 8 to the power of 2. Now it doesn't matter if you get the cubed root of 8 and then square it, or square 8 and then get the cubed root. So I'm going to uh, get the cubed root and then square it because that's pretty easy. What number multiplied by itself three times gives me 8? Well, 2. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So the cube root of 8 is 2. So that's 2 squared. Oh, 2 squared, I know that. 2 times 2 is 4. Okay. Don't panic again. We're going to see this, probably see more of this uh, much further down the track anyway. Okay, uh, that's an introduction to all of the index laws. Uh, we're going to be covering this uh, in some detail over the next uh, a few days and into next week. Thanks, guys. Get the index laws down, write them down, put them somewhere prominent where you're going to be looking at them for the next couple of weeks, okay? Yeah, even during the holidays, right? Put them, put them up somewhere prominent. So make sure you've got them down. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, we're going to be discussing the first four of these laws in our, our Teams meeting later on today. Uh, and then any questions after that, you know what to do. Uh, comments below or in Teams or via email. Thanks a lot.